I'm very happy to be here this evening. We're doing a special program tonight in honor of, I believe, this young devotee. Let's all give her a big hurry ball. It's her what birthday? First? First birthday. So tonight, in between, we're going to have as many singers and chanters as possible. And in between, I'm going to be speaking on one prayer called Damodar Ashtakam. It says in the Hari Bhakti Balas, in the month of Kartik, one should worship Lord Damodar. Everybody say. And daily recite the prayer known as Damodarashtak, which has been spoken by sage Satyavrata and which attracts Lord Damodar. Lord Damodar is here. He's also referred to as Radha Damodar because this month is also dedicated to Srimati Radhika Takurani. It's also her month as well. So we'll do as many verses as we can in between. Minakshi Vrajarani, I would like you to be the next singer. Are you prepared? Thank you. Can I have a D? All right. Can you play? Can you follow? You should learn these keys for future reference. Namami Shwarang Sachit Ananda Rupam Lasat Kundalam Go Kule Brajamanam Namami Shwarang Sachit Ananda Rupam Lasat Kundalam Go Kule Brajamanam Namami Shwarang Sachit Ananda Rupam Lasat Kundalam Go Kule Brajamanam Sing Prabhu, sing Yashoda Biyo Luka Ladava Manam Padam Rishtam Adyanta Chodrutya Gopya Yashoda be o lukalad dava manang Param rishtam adyantato brutya gopya Jaya radha damodara radha damodara radhe Jaya Radha Damodara Radha Damodara Radhe Jaya Radha Damodara Radha Damodara Radhe Jai Prabhupada, Jai Prabhupada, Jai Prabhupada, Jai Prabhupada. Sri Sri Radha Damodara Ki. So, it is of note that when Srila Prabhupada, my spiritual master, before coming to America, he spent some time in Vrindavan at that Radha Damodar temple. And there he got the inspiration or confirmation. He was once again inspired to come and execute the order of his spiritual master. His spiritual master had told him in 1922 at their first meeting, before he was a disciple, 
the very first words from Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati's mouth. You should preach this message in English. And that message was repeated again later when uh, he became his initiated disciple. And he wrote one letter just before his Guru Maharaj passed away. Again, it was confirmed. Go and preach in English. And Prabhupada was thinking that usually when people preach, they think of London. But Prabhupada said, no, America. And so Prabhupada arrived first in Boston Harbor in September of 1965. And then properly land in New York and began his Hare Krishna movement from New York. And ISKCON was incorporated in July of 1966. So as his disciple, I must always remember that I owe my life to my spiritual master and I am duty bound to present the philosophy as he is presenting it. So this first verse is very nice. We see here the translation to the Supreme Lord. So, as Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita, Matta Paratara Nanyat, there is no truth superior to me. Throughout Bhagavad Gita, Krishna makes it clear. He refers to Anyat Devata, other gods. But Krishna makes it clear I am supreme, I am the original. I am the source. Everyone else is dependent and subservient to me. So here it says, Ishwar, the supreme controller. To the supreme controller. Now, what makes this Krishna Damodar special? Satchid Ananda. Our bodies are not Satchid Ananda. We all know this very clear. We wake up, aches, pains. We look in the mirror, another wrinkle, another gray hair. Where's the henna? Another problem, coughing, eyes getting weak day by day. Imperceptibly, the time factor, very cruel, robbing away our youth and vitality from this body that we have. But Krishna's body is eternal. It does not age. As Prabhupada mentions, on the battlefield of Kurukshetra, Krishna was at least 120 years old. But how do you look like a 16, 20-year-old youth? That's God. He's not an old man with a beard as some religions depict. No. He's Navayovanam, ever youthful. So his body, because in this song, Rupam, body, form. He has a spiritual form. He's not formless. He has a form, Rupam. That's why this Word is so important. Rupam, form, body. It's eternal. Chit, fully knowledgeable. We have to go to school for so many years, study, study, study. Your doctor, how many years you had to study to become Dr. Nanda? Right? Krishna went to school just to show. He learned everything, 64 days. His teacher would teach him one thing. By the end of the day, boom, he had it down. Not only that, it's not that Krishna had to go to school. He already knows everything. Because that very body that he has is full of knowledge, full of consciousness. Then this nice word, 
Ananda. Everybody say. Ananda. Ananda is something we have yet to experience. Here in the material world, we experience sukha, happiness. But those who have studied Bhagavad Gita and those who accept Bhagavad Gita know that happiness comes in three flavors. Vanilla, chocolate, strawberry. Goodness, passion, ignorance. Okay? And if you study Bhagavad Gita, it's very clear. Whether your happiness is in the mode of goodness, passion, or ignorance, it has an up and a down. It is not steady. Nothing is steady. But Ananda is different. Ananda means ever-increasing happiness. That we have not experienced. We get a glimpse of Ananda when we chant. Everybody chant. Lord Chaitanya says that when you chant the holy name of God, you get a taste of the full nectar. Amrita, Purna Amrita. Full nectar. Just like there in the Vedas, you can find this word Bhagavan. And it's used sometimes for uh, Shambhu. Or Brahma is sometimes referred to as Bhagavan. Even Indra is sometimes, even Narada. But Krishna is referred to as Purna Bhagavan. Ah, the complete Bhagavan. The other Bhagavans, no, no, no. Purna Bhagavan is reserved for this Krishna that's here tonight in front of you. This, who is the subject of this song, Damo Dara. Everybody say. He is Purna Bhagavan, complete, not just complete, unlimitedly complete. Huh. That's a new concept. Usually, in the material world, complete, uh, everything understands. But to describe Krishna, unlimitedly complete. It's a different concept. So, Satchit Ananda Rupam, his body, his form, is eternal, fully cognizant, and ever blissful. Then it says, so the author of this song is painting a picture for us. He says that this Krishna, he has earrings. All right? What kind of earrings? Shark shaped earrings. And here they're swinging. In this Leela, Damodar, they're swinging. And it says he's located not in Newport Coast, he's located in Gokul. Who has been to Gokul in India? Yes, Gokul. A special part of Vrindavan. Gokul. That's where Krishna spent the first years of his life. Gokula. And it says he's shining. He's glowing. This refers to Bhagavad Gita. The end of chapter 14. Brahmano hi pratishta aham. This effulgence known by the impersonalists as Brahma Jyoti, Brahman. This is coming from Krishna's Rupam. And this verse of Bhagavad Gita, Brahma Nohi Pratishtaham, is significant because Krishna is saying, this Brahma, this Brahma Jyoti, is coming from me. Some people... They are spiritually dyslectic. They think, no, Krishna comes from Brahman. But Krishna says, you are wrong. Brahman comes from me. It's a big difference. Just like it would be ludicrous to say the sun planet comes from the sunshine. That's not scientific. The sunshine comes from the sun. That is correct. In the same way, this Brahman or Brahma Jyoti comes from Sachidananda Rupam, the beautiful transcendental body of 
Damodar. Now, this next line is interesting. This Supreme Lord, Ishwar, whose earrings are swinging, whose body is transcendental, is running in fear. Huh? How is this possible? He's running away in fear from a demon? No, his mother. He's running away from Mother Yashoda. Very interesting. This song is describing a particular Leela, Damodar Leela. So he, where was he? He was standing on a grinding mortar doing mischief. Krishna was a young baby, few years old. And he is at this age very naughty as children are apt to be, especially boys. They're very naughty. So this Krishna Damodar was also naughty. He had climbed up and on the ceiling was kept the yogurt that Mother Yashoda and the other gopis would be making. And Krishna was taking the yogurt and giving it to his friends, the monkeys. You've been to Vrindavan, you know there's many monkeys. They're all over. So those are Krishna's friends that he likes to share. So, when he saw his mother, she had a stick in her hand and she was angry. And when Krishna saw her, as any child would, when the child sees the mother angry, the child becomes afraid, especially with the stick. Maybe some of you have gotten the stick when you were young. I don't know. It's not a good feeling to get the stick. So Krishna jumped down and began to run very quickly, afraid of the punishment from his mother. But after some time, although Yashoda is fully bodied, she's much older, that eventually he caught, she caught this Krishna and he, she, he was caught. So that's the first picture the author wants to meditate on. This scene of Krishna being chased by his mother. He's afraid of her, but she has caught him. So stay tuned. Don't change the channel. We're going to continue with more episodes of this exciting serial. Now we will hear Meenakshi Brajarani. She will sing for us. Everybody chant the Maha Mantra. <laughs> 